How to be tactful. Isaac Newton once said, Tact is the art of making a point without making an enemy. Being tactful is just that, having the ability to clearly communicate your message while being sensitive to those around you and not unintentionally offending anyone. Being tactful does not mean hiding what you really feel, it just means presenting your ideas in a way that would make them the most appealing and inoffensive. If you want to know how to be tactful, then you should see step one to get started. Being tactful in conversation. Think before you speak. Allow yourself a pause to consider how your words could be perceived, and to prevent yourself from making hasty comments. You may have an immediate gut reaction to something your boss or friend is saying, but take a moment to gather your thoughts before you come right out and say what you want to say. Ask yourself if it's the best time to present your ideas, if you should spend some time finding a better way to say what you want to say, and if people will be receptive to your comments right then. Though speaking with your gut can lead to a lot of interesting ideas, it can also help to take a few minutes to formulate your thoughts first. If you instantly disagree with something your boss says, for example, you're better off thinking of concrete examples for why you disagree instead of just blurting out that you think it's a bad idea. Notice the people around you. You may want to make a comment about how excited you are for your wedding, when one of the people there is going through a bitter divorce. Though you don't have to hide your enthusiasm forever, you may be better off finding a better time to make your comment. Deflect negative comments. If people are making negative comments around you, you should avoid getting wrapped up in them if you want to be tactful. This is especially true if you're in the workplace and don't want to be part of the office politics. There are several ways in which you can deflect negative comments and take the high road in testy situations. Here are some ways to do it. Gently correct gossip. Example, I'm sorry you heard that about Jane Doe. When I spoke to her, she said that it was just a rumor about her getting fired, say something non-committal. Example, I've never met John Doe, so I wouldn't have a clue about his drinking habits, say something positive. Mary Sue may be late a lot, but she does really good work, or, Bill Jones has always been civil to me personally, change the subject. You know, your comment about the boss reminds me of something. There's an office party coming up, right? Are you bringing anyone? Remove yourself from the situation. If people keep being negative and the situation isn't letting up, then you can excuse yourself and say you need to get back to class or work. You should make it seem unrelated to the conversation at hand. Ask the person nicely to stop. Say, I'm really not interested in gossiping about our neighbor, or, I'd prefer not talk about that in the office. Start with a positive comment before giving negative feedback. If you have to give negative feedback to someone, whether it's a coworker or your best friend, you should couch it in a way that makes the person the most receptive. This doesn't mean you should lie to the person if things aren't going well, but that you should start off with something positive so the person sees that you care about him or her. Here are some ways to do it. If you want to give negative feedback to a friend, you can say something like, I think it's so sweet of you to always want to set me up with the single guys you know. But when you try to do it every time we go out, it kind of makes me feel pathetic. If you want to give negative feedback to a coworker, you can say something like, I really appreciate how hard you've been working on the new project. However, I think the project can be even better if you let Mary help you out a bit more. Choose your words carefully. When it comes to being tactful, one of the most important things to keep in mind is that you should be aware of the words you use to express your ideas. You can still say what you want to say without offending people or coming off mean or like a know-it-all. When you're getting ready to state an opinion, ask yourself if the words you're using are biased, hurtful, patronizing, or just all wrong for the occasion. Then, find the words that will help further your ideas without offending anyone. For example, if you want to talk to a coworker about how she needs to get her work done faster, don't tell her she's slow. Instead, ask her if she can think of ways to be more efficient. For example, if you're telling your boss you're leaving your job, you don't have to say something like, I am just way too smart for these people. Instead, you can say something like, this company isn't the best fit for me. Choose your timing carefully. When it comes to being tactful, having great timing is half the battle. You may have something perfectly nice to say, which can ruin a social situation if you say it at the wrong time, and can lead to hurt feelings without you meaning to do any harm. Before you make a comment, ask yourself if this is the best time to make the comment, and if everyone there will be receptive to it. Ask yourself if it would be better to wait to get a more positive response, even if you're dying to say what you want to say. For example, if your friend Linda is excited to tell all of her friends about her recent engagement, then you may have to hold off the news that you're pregnant for another week, so Linda can enjoy the spotlight for a bit longer. You don't want her to feel like you trumped her big day. For example, if your boss is wrapping up a long presentation at the end of the workday, this may not be the best time to ask your question about an unrelated report. Asking the question now will only lead to confusion and your boss will be focused on the presentation and won't have the energy to address your concerns. If you wait until the next day, your boss will be happier to discuss the issue with you.
Decline invitations politely. If someone asks you to do something, you should find a way to politely decline it, even if your gut is screaming, heck no, whether you're being asked to attend the baby shower of a person you barely know or to stay late at work on a Friday night, instead of immediately saying no and looking angry or upset about it, you should take the time to say how much you would like to do it and then give a brief explanation or apology about not being able to do it. This will still get the same message across, but you won't offend anyone in the process. For example, if your boss asks you to take on another project and you just don't have any more time on your hands, you can say something like, thank you so much for thinking of me for this opportunity. Unfortunately, I'm still wrapping up those two other projects you asked me about and I won't be able to take on the extra work. But I would love to help out on something similar in the future. For example, if your friend invites you to go hiking but hiking isn't really your thing, you can say something like, your weekend trip to the Redwood Forest sounds amazing, but I'm going to take it easy this weekend, I've had a crazy week at work and need to decompress. How about we catch up over drinks next Friday? Don't reveal too much personal information to people you don't know very well. Another thing that people who lack tact tend to do is to go about announcing their business to every person on the street. If you want to have tact, then you can't go around telling anyone within earshot about your latest breakup, your new rash, or all of your personal problems. Telling people you don't know well all your business will only make them uncomfortable and won't lead to any new friendships. Have tact and be aware of when people would like to hear more and when enough is enough. This also goes for revealing personal information about other people. If you're with a close friend and a few less than close friends, don't pick up on a private conversation you had with that friend in front of the other people, your friend might have been happy to talk about his complicated relationship with his mother with you, but he may not want the world to know about it. Make sure your body language reflects your words. It's great if your words are sending a friendly and polite message, but if your body is telling people something different, then they'll quickly get a different picture. If you're telling someone something important in a delicate way, then you should make eye contact, face the person, and not hunch over or look at the floor. Give the person your attention and show that you actually care. It'll be hard for them to take you seriously if you're telling the person that he or she is doing great at work while you're looking in the other direction. Actions really can speak louder than words, so make sure that your body isn't sending a different message from your mouth. 